In January 1945, the Red Army was wiping out German troops on the Eastern Front, while the American Army was on the Western Front. Adolf Hitler, little by little, got used to the idea that his defeat was imminent. Taking refuge in his bunker, the last months of the Fuhrer's life were consumed by terror and paranoia. After what had happened to his Italian ally Benito Mussolini, Hitler wanted to avoid being caught by enemy forces at all costs. The corpse of the fascist leader had been terribly desecrated by the Italian people after his execution. The head of the Nazi empire did not want, under any circumstances, to allow his enemies to violate his deceased body. However, Adolf Hitler did not try to escape from Berlin because such a mission was practically impossible. The Fuhrer chose to marry his partner Eva Braun, with whom he would commit suicide hours later. The bodies of both were cremated to prevent the Soviets from getting their hands on them. Or at least, that's what official sources say. Today in military history we bring you a recapitulation of what were the last days in the life of Adolf Hitler, one of the most bloodthirsty figures in history. Are you ready? Let's begin. At the beginning of 1945, the general feeling, both for the Allies and for the Axis, was that the Second World War would come to an end. This conclusion to the conflict found Adolf Hitler completely unarmed in the face of the Allied forces, but the Nazi leader was willing to do whatever was necessary to avoid defeat. Faced with both the Soviet and American threats, the Fuhrer ordered all Germans between the ages of 15 and 70 to take up arms to defend their homeland. His armament minister, Albert Speer, tried to convince him that this was not a good idea, since having every man in the nation as soldiers meant stopping all German industry. This also affected Hitler's arms policy, because railways, the manufacture of weapons, communications and logistical tasks that involved both food and supply were needed to continue the war. However, the Austrian ignored the advice of his minister. This would be just one example of his progressive isolation from his peers. On January 16, Hitler made the decision to lock himself in his Führer bunker, an installation that he had ordered to be built under the Chancellery building, as a safe place against possible attacks against his person. The bunker had more than 30 rooms, equipment, a sophisticated ventilation system, the perfect camouflage so as not to be discovered, and impenetrability ensured due to the concrete walls, which were, depending on the case, between 2 and 4 meters thick. Although the meetings with the high command were held in the chancellery, over time the Nazi leader secluded himself more and more within this structure, a place where his paranoia would gradually grow, with the deterioration of his armed forces. During the last days of his life, he began to see betrayal everywhere, and his paranoid state became an increasing hindrance to his closest officers. This is how he came to accuse Heinrich Himmler of treason, for trying to negotiate a peace with the Allies, as well as Hermann Göring due to the growing suspicion that he was planning a coup. Both were dismissed from all their positions and imprisoned. In the compound, other of the officers who were still loyal to him saw how his delusions became more and more usual. One of them occurred on April 27, when the Nazi leader summoned Otto Gunsch, an SS officer, and ordered him to mobilize his 8,000 soldiers to break the Russian siege that hung over the city. The subordinate did not understand the request, since he had already let his boss know that he only had 2,000 poorly organized soldiers. This was not satisfactory to the deranged mind of the Fuhrer, who accused his officer of being a liar. Something that is rarely talked about in reference to the last days of Hitler and his regime is the impact that the imminent defeat had on an army that was doing everything possible to overcome the situation. As historian Antony Beaver explains in his essay Berlin, The Fall, 1945, by the end of the war some of the younger soldiers began compulsively drinking and having sex. The desperation before a possible and quick death led these men to indulge in vices to ignore their situation. The same thing happened inside the bunker where the Fuhrer was hiding. It was common for those who surrounded Hitler to live between drunkenness, using any situation as an excuse to take a bottle and ignore that they had the Allies on their necks. On April 29, 1945, Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun, his partner, got married inside the bunker and went to bed. Practically none of them slept a wink that night, since they were aware that their hours were numbered. After Benito Mussolini and his lover Clara Patacci were shot together, 
and their bodies violated and desecrated by an enraged Italian people, Hitler wanted to escape this fate at all costs, both for himself and for his recent wife. So both decided to die together, but not before giving specific instructions on what should be done with his body after his death. At noon on April 30th, Hitler and his wife locked themselves in a room. At 3.30 p.m. a shot was heard from inside. When Officer Martin Bormann and other assistants checked inside the room, they found the Fuhrer shot in the head with his Walther PPK 7.65. Eva Braun was also dead, but the woman had ingested a cyanide capsule that killed her almost instantly. The bodies of both were taken to the surface and cremated to prevent the Soviets from seizing them. The next morning, the Red Army conquered Berlin, and Stalin asked for proof that his rival had indeed died. Although Adolf Hitler's dental technician and assistant were captured to confirm that the dental remains found buried in the chancellery belonged to the Fuhrer and his wife, Stalin disbelieved this version of events. But the Soviet leader was not the only one to suspect the situation, so numerous theories began to emerge about the true final destination of the Fuhrer. The best-known claims that Hitler escaped from Germany in a U-boat submarine to South America, to be more specific, to the city of Bariloche in southern Argentina. Another theory explains that the Nazi leader escaped to a secret base located in Antarctica. But studies conducted on the aforementioned dentures in 1968, 1972, and 2017 supported the official version of events. Do you think Hitler really died in his bunker on April 30, 1945 or did he manage to hatch a plan to escape? Leave your answer in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned for our next video.